Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, we're going to start our ongoing meditation session now. Keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and focus your mind to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind, relax your breathing with your thoughts. Do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. तस् भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् नमो तस् भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् नमो तस् भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् होमेज टू द ब्लेस्ड वन the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So bring your attention to your body. Scan head to toes three times yourself and say Swapatveva. Oh, may I be well and happy. Three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment, with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment. This is the last moment we are spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment. Focusing to the sensation of your inhalation and exhalation. And then later observe the, the body, feelings, thoughts, and the phenomena. So in the beginning, we're going to relax our body step by step. Following my words, mentally relax your body, please. Relax your head. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyebrows. Relax your eyes. Relax your ears. Relax your nose. Relax your upper lip. Relax your lower lip. Relax your chin. Relax your whole face muscles. Relax your teeth. 
relax your tongue, relax your mouth, relax your throat. Relax your neck. Relax your shoulders, arms, elbow, forearms, palms, fingers, fingertips. Relax your spine and relax your whole back muscles. Relax your chest and relax your whole abdominal muscles. Relax your lungs, relax your heart, relax your liver, relax your kidneys, relax your gallbladder, relax your pancreas. Relax your small intestine. Relax your large intestine. Relax your all abdominal organs. Relax your butt, relax your thigh, relax your knee, relax your calf muscles, relax your foot and relax your toes. Relax your whole body muscles, tendons, ligaments, bone, bone marrows, and whole skeleton. Release the tension in your mind and keep relax your face muscles. Now slowly and gently place your attention in front of your nose and your upper lip area. Deeply and gently breathing, breathe out three times and find the sensation of your inhalation, exhalation, please. And slowly observe the sensation and through the sensation recognize this is inhalation, this is exhalation. Do nothing extra. So when you observe, remember your mind should be 100% awake and you have to use your maximum strength and you have to have the clarity without any doubt regarding 
the sensation. Remember that three qualities always, each and every moment. Just allow your inhalation, exhalation to happen naturally. If your mind go here and there, bring it back again and again. Keep your attention to the sensation of the inhalation, exhalation.
bring my attention to your body. Observe head to toes, your whole bodily structure. Observe your posture. See what you recognize as your body. Because when you close your eyes, you cannot see yourself. But how you get into know This is my body. Don't think. Just observe and recognize. You hold the feelings. Through the feelings you recognize this is my body. And observe the feelings, sensation, without reacting to it. Just observe. So if your mind go here and there, you disconnect from the feelings or recognition. So that's mean mind should develop to recognize the sensation.
observe the thoughts. When you observe the thoughts, you have no body, you have no form, you become formless. When you become formless, there is no feelings. See how the mind happens. Thought arise according to necessary conditions. So the body is not the body, feelings is not the feelings. Mind is not the mind. This all reflection of conditions. Nature of the conditions always change. Change is not just a moment of something. The entire moment of experience arising, existing and disappearing. Bring attention to your body. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light. Through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars.
reminding yourself like this with clear intention mentally repeat after me may all living beings in this universe be well and happy May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are frail or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away. already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. to your backside. To your left side. and to your right side. Downward. and upward. To all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, Spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion.
from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest wishing yourself may all living beings in this universe be well and happy Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So dear Dhamma practitioners, there was a boy and by birth uh, he had only one arm. So everybody used to make fun out of him. And when he go to school, and other friends gave a hard time. And uh, even no one used to appreciate him. He became kind of like a you know, useless person. One day he was walking through the, sto uh, the street. Then he saw some people practicing judo. Judo is the the one of the, the well-known famous martial art come from Japan. So this boy every day used to see these people practice. And then there was an old master teaching sensei. And one day this boy stopped outside the class and start to look what these people are doing. And this old sensei saw this boy and told, come in. And this boy entered without any hopes. And he was a kind of like a person rejected from everybody. But this is a kind of a strange invitation for him because mostly people say, go away, go away. This is the first time he heard coming somebody asking, somebody inviting him. And even it was a kind of like a, all the, the strong people practicing and he got a kind of like, a, he became so happy inside, but at the same time he had the fear. So then he entered to the class and uh, this old sensei asked, you want to practice? This boy, this boy was so happy and tall. I have only one arm, these old people. So then the sensei told, so from tomorrow, come after school. So he go to school. Now everybody you know, make fun out of him. He don't care now. Why? Because he have a dream to go to the class because there is a place that somebody 
appreciate somebody inviting him, somebody giving a space. So the boy became kind of like, uh, you know, so calm, relaxed when while that uh, other children make fun out of him. So then what happened? This boy start to practice and the sensei, the teacher taught him only one technique. The other boys, other students used to learn many, many techniques. But, but teacher, six months, just taught only one technique. So this boy keep practicing with his one arm. And then one day asked, can I learn any other snakes, the, the techniques? The teacher told, the sensei told, no, just keep practice, keep practice don't have any hopes regarding any other technique. This is the only technique you have and this is one of the most difficult technique in judo practice. So keep practice this. So the boy start to keep practice and he didn't look for any other you know, options, any other techniques, just one technique he keep practice. After six months, he became kind of like a, you know, more skillful student with that one technique in one arm. So then what happened? There was a competition and the teacher took him there. In the very first level, the first round, he beat the, the other guy and he became first. So then he went to the second round and he became the first. So somehow, little by little, little by little, he keep beating to everybody and then came to the final. So that day, all the, the, the other teachers and came and had the, uh, uh, the meeting and then having a discussion regarding the capability of this guy because maybe he get injured and he have no much experience. And so then, but, but the sensei, his coach told, don't worry, I'll take all the responsibility. And then he went to the final competition. And there was a strong guy and tried to fight with this six month train, this newcomer. So then what happened? This boy won the, the tournament and he became the best. So then on the way, the teacher and the, this guy had the conversation. This student asked, Sensei, how this happened? This all the, the boys, this all other students and uh, used to practice so long. And uh, I just practiced six months. And uh, even I have only one arm. So what happened to them? How I became like this? So then Sensei told, one thing, you practiced one technique and you became so good with that technique and you mastered that technique and then you deeply have the confident you didn't see that because you don't have any other options. And then you always look for that, you go, go for that. You don't have any other choice. And for them, what happened? They learn many techniques and mostly they practice to, to tackle other guys, the other opponents, other student, and thinking they have two arms. They practice to, to fight for two arms. So when you go with one arm, there are half of skills cut down. And that way you win 50% already when you go there. Why? Because they have no opportunity to grab you. Another thing is that the lack of the trust that they have because you are, have, you are one arm and they overconfident themselves. Oh, this guy have only two, uh, one arm. So I have two arms. And so, 
and overconfidence lose their other 50%. So remember in your life, when it comes to meditation, and even in, when it comes to in day-to-day -day life sometimes, you can, you can see very easily what you lose, what you don't have. But in another way, you don't see what are the capabilities, what are the opportunities that you can get out of it. If I bring another story, as you know, David and Goliath, when they have the fight, the Goliath was the big, huge monster. And the David, everybody ran and they, 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 then the David had tall. He's so big. Everybody complained, don't go, he's so big. Then the David told, he's big because of that. My target not going to miss. So, dear devotees, remember in life, when it comes to life, it is more important the way you behave with your own mind. Not with the society, not with the outside world. Because the way you talk to yourself, the way you behave with your own mind, the way you develop things inside you, end of the day, going to become your life. So then always remember, there is no choice for you. Don't try to depend on others in day-to-day -day life. That is, the, that is the one of the, the most important teachings when it comes to the Buddha's teaching. Be, like, be a lamp to yourself. Be an island to yourself. Be a master to yourself. That doesn't mean you're developing kind of like a very self-centered, egocentric life. No, but you have the 100% responsibility regarding yourself. So then always nourish your heart with all the good qualities. And don't bring any negativity to yourself. So that is very important in, in the conventional life. So in the conventional life, when it comes to the, the very behavior of it, Understanding it very carefully is very necessary for you. When it comes to dharma, there are two words. Dharma, dharmata. So it's kind of like fundamentals and the phenomena. So the dharma is, you cannot, you cannot do anything for that. It doesn't matter you, you like it or not. And it doesn't matter that uh, you understand it or not. It's going to be there. As example, hardness. Heat, motion, liquidity, and hardness, four elements. That is the dharma. And no one can change it. And no one can get anything out of it. And it, it depends on itself. And it, it is independent and it, 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 it has a behavior and forever it going, the hardness is a dharma. It's a, it's a quality that itself exists. And when it comes to dharma tad or the phenomena, and out of that, what you can understand, when you, rec that the, when you recognize how this behave, that observing that behavior going to teach you something. As example, there is an object and you have the eye. When the eye and the object come together, eye consciousness arise. Ear, ear, the ear object or the sound, when the ear and ear object comes together, ear consciousness arise. That is a dharmata. So that is a phenomena. That is what you have to understand. All the scientists may be recognized the, the, the very behavior of the nature. So that's why they can create many things out of the 
the atom but still if they don't recognize the 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 bottom of the the phenomena they're not going to get out of anything maybe they create something but that doesn't mean they can get anything out of it so that is why mostly we deal with the outside world and we we look it is look like we we holding to it and we do things but it is finally end of the day we become a debtor to this outside world but recognizing phenomena it is not like that using this everything you become free and rather than becoming a debtor you become free so there's two ways using that all the four elements you can create something and you can make something happen and then you can bound to that whatever the the outside result and then you can put a name i did this of course you can do that but see that as example you creating you making different different parts and then you create a pen it's brand new it is completely your the design and then you use all the four elements to make this pen happen like this way and then you bound to this pen and tell i did this and then you put your name also you get the patent and you hold it to it and then you think i did this so then what happened your mind caught up to this and rather than becoming free from this and you became a debtor to this you are always harbor to this and another way you recognize the four elements and then you recognize that what happened how the four elements can change to different things and out of that change how things can arise out of the change how the things arise whatever that arisen also possible to change why because that all the fundamental change that's why you able to make this pen happen so as example plastic iron or the ink so this everything heat motion liquidity and hardness able to change so that's why you make the pen happen so then that as a result of that change this pen became so then this pen invisibly bound to change that is the buddha's teaching rather than bound to this and recognizing that what is the deeply that inherent within this so how this became like this because of the change and that change it is just not only for a one moment it's always happening and that happening we call existence so when it come to your life in day to day life that whatever you experience then always remember rather than getting to or rather than analyzing or rather than looking the the outside surface level of incident so the events or the situations or the things and learn to recognize and how these things can happen why these things happens so that is what you can you can get that is what called dharmata because dharmata is happening all the time and once you recognize that is where the you slowly phenomena you slowly start to get out of the the formations formations relate to phenomena so as example you there is a, a i object and you have the i so when these two things come together i consciousness arise so then that that mechanism billion billion years ago if somebody used to be in this world 
that person also had that and then in the future billion billions after eons after eons whoever have the eye if there is an object when these two things come together eye consciousness going to arise and not only this planet if you hear or oh, maybe the the mass they having they have in human beings or any other beings and they have eyes and then they also going to have the eye consciousness so that is a phenomena that that you cannot that you cannot change and but when you understand that that is where that that wisdom is what you need because other than that what what you going to do with the hardness because you are itself a result of hardness so what you going to do with the motion or liquidity or the heat you cannot do anything that is the very nature you are you are you are came out of it but when it come to the buddha's teaching you have to remember and you have to recognize how this behavior happen that is why we go with the cause and effect if you don't go with the cause and effect and or if you don't go if you don't catch the the phenomena maybe you recognize the fundamentals recognizing fundamentals doesn't mean it help you to gain the liberation so before the buddha and even nowadays even there are many other people can get the fundamentals but they don't recognize the behavior of the fundamental so then always remember your purpose should be when it come to your inner recognition when you observe the, the pain just recognizing pain doesn't make any sense of course you know you have a pain because it is a part of consciousness then what to recognize it is there that's a, when you see the pain it's a pain is it's a part of recognition otherwise you're not going to get the pain so then what did say recognize 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 the behavior of the pain so rather than hold it to the name or the rather than hold it to the shape recognize the behavior of it so there are two two words change and impermanent so the change when conventional you can you, you every day experience the change but when it come to impermanence why you cannot catch the the impermanent out of the change because if you go with the change it's kind of like you go with the 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 outside layer but when it come to the in permanent you see entire process arising existing and disappearance all so this every day it happen it is there that's why it teach it is visible it in permanent is visible but why we cannot see it because your mind interfere with something else so that's why through the meditation little by little little by little we trying to get into that so what is the meaning of it is visible how we how you can experience that so when it come to impermanent or when it come to that arising existing and disappearance in day to day life just imagine you you just see a tree or maybe you see a apple tree so when you see the apple tree in that very moment it is that is the present moment you recognize this is a tree and then maybe you recognize this if there is apple or you you recognize this is apple that recognition is the present moment that is what we every day trying to get into that and the invisible also visible to you so what is that so you don't you, you don't have a tree then there is a space in your garden then 
you go to garden shop and you buy a little plant, apple tree. So how you buy that? Why you buy it? Because you know this tree going to give you apple. But in the moment, you don't see like the, the first tree that you saw and recognize this is an apple tree. And this is a little plant, even no flowers. And even you have no idea it is capable or not to give apple, but you know, this is an apple tree and it going to give apple. So recognizing the tree is kind of like uh, you recognize fundam that the, the pin, uh, fundamentals. You out of other trees, you get this is apple tree. But without flowers, without even becoming you know young or strong that tree, without apple, how you know this tree going to give you apple? That is the method that you use phenomena or dharma ta. Because you know this kind of tree have a capability to bring the apples. That is, the, that is what the, the Theravada, the Buddhism deeply taught. That is why. So it is a tree, just a give example. That is why. You have to practice the discipline. Don't do this, don't do this, don't do it. It didn't happen to you. But when young, two young people get married, and you can tell what's going to happen in the future. Why? Because the marriage is kind of like a, the phenomenon, a fundamentals. When two get married, they, are a, they belong to phenomena, dharmata. And they cannot escape from that. So same like when you, when you like for a child, it's that likeness is kind of like a fundamental. Once you have it, out of that fundamentals, the whatever the phenomena are going to happen, you have no power of it. You have no authority on it. It belongs to this phenomena. So once you know that, always you slowly get out of things. Why? Because you know if you do this, this is going to happen. And not only that, now, so the present moment you recognize, or oh, as example, the fire is there. And if you put the, your hand, you're going to burn. It is a present moment of, you know, experience, understanding. This is a, a very common. So it, because the, this is the thing that mostly we believe out of meditation, you can get something that which you don't know. In Theravada Buddha's teaching, it doesn't talk like that way. That's why it called it is visible. That it's how it is visible. Like the way you go to the garden shop and buy a tree without any fruits on it, and with the hopes that this tree is going to give you fruits. That means in that very moment. It is visible for you. It is not a hope. It is visible for you. That's why you do it. So then in, when it comes to your life, so whatever the action you do deeply, remember, there is a truth that you hold. That's why you keep doing it. If you, if you don't see that it is in you, you will never get out of it. Another thing is, whatever going to happen in the future, it also visible for you. It is visible for you. 
it is just not a, you cannot tell oh it is in the in the future whatever happen it will happen that way no that's why you that when you recognize this method you become more careful with your bodily verbally and mentally action why because you know when you do something and things going to happen it is out of out of your control so then when it come to that the, regarding the 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 future you are able to see and even not only that the past also you can see how the past you can see so just imagine the apple tree that it, it you see a tree and then it's already and uh, uh, died so then around that there was a fire that the kind of like a, a few days ago there was a fire happened and now this tree already burned little bit and died so you recognize this tree died and not only that you able to recognize the reason that through the present moment of the reason you recognize what happened in the past because of the fire this tree died so see it is visible you that the, the past is visible for you so like that way when you come to the moment that whatever in the moment in this very moment remember you are not disconnect from that whatever you have done in the past and oh whatever you going to do in the future that's why when it come to buddhas teaching see remember that the, that uh, buddha even you can remember when you keep practice meditate when your mind become clear clear all the things you going to remember even in the mother's womb you can remember even your previous life you can remember and not only that even around you people you can remember but that that memory not going to bound and hold oh this is this is like this way why because when the mind become clear you recognize how this all happen and not only that that why this happen so like that way when it come to observing and recognizing means you observe the the moment of the experience to recognize the phenomena or the dharmata so how these things happen so then you see the change so when you able to recognize the change means it is just not the moment of disappearance arising existing and disappearance the entire process is called impermanent if you don't see that if you just only the see that the arising or if you see only the existence if you see only the disappearance you will don't you cannot understand what is impermanent so the impermanent means arising existing and disappearing so when you see the change in the very moment you recognize something or the object and when you keep observing 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 what will happen your mind become clear and sharp and that clarity will show you arising existing and disappearance but the thing is when the mind is interfere with something you're not going to recognize this as example look in the very moment you don't see your inhalation exhalation but when you keep put the attention what will happen you will recognize how the inhalation arise and the how the it continue and how it end that seeing this entire process is the the recognition of impermanent so then rather than just observing inhalation exhalation inhalation exhalation it's kind of like uh, the uh, you you caught up in the that the 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 mula or the more the pound fundamentals so the fundamentals going to be forever in the universe 
just dealing with the fundamentals is doesn't work as example suffering suffering is kind of like uh, you know the reason it's all all over the universe whoever experience life the suffering going to be there don't focus to that don't try to deal with it you recognize it but start to look how this happen go in go go into it and investigate it happiness happiness is everywhere it happening all the time you have no power out of happiness but rather than caught up on it settle down on it start to look what is this how this happen then you going to see something that is what you need but the thing is we mostly try to intellectually understand or oh, suffering happiness dukkha or the fear we 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 trying to understand things so that doesn't work in life it doesn't matter you understand it or not it it has its own way but start to look why because your time is very limited so don't waste your time for unnecessary things that's why the buddha mentioned when it come to satipattana or the vidarsana from 7 day to 7 years and the buddha guaranteed and you can attain to enlightenment that's mean you don't go with unnecessary informations you directly go to how things arise existing and disappearing when it come to that it doesn't matter for you it is a happiness it doesn't matter for you it is a dukkha it doesn't matter for you it is a comfort it doesn't matter for you it is a fear so then you come out of the dualistic mind the very first level remember that if you are caught up in the dualistic mind you cannot look for that so once you get out of the dualistic mind your main purpose is recognizing how this happened then you're not focusing to oh it is a happiness or it is a unhappiness no you don't focus to that because look at the world the world is trying to deal with that way and how to get out of the happiness the unhappiness and how to uh, increase the happiness how to get out of the the death and how to create the longevity when it come to to vipassana level of observation we don't look for that kind of details so in life yourself remember when you come to a point to see whatever that happen rather than dividing it to a categories with the dualistic mind with with the comparison if you try to do things you 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 cannot get into the dharma so in the deeper level what you have to do start to look how it happened and the way it happened and then you will see it doesn't matter it is a happiness it is a unhappiness you going to see something that something is that everything happened the same way how how you you cannot you cannot uh, get into kind of how it is possible like that way that is why you have to experience that but the thing is we are caught up into theories and we are caught up into patterns we are caught up and we are very limited to teachers or the the certain kind of practice or the techniques because of that ourselves we cannot get into that freedom so then little by little when you practice meditation always look rather than putting the names categorizing and dividing things and go with your past experience just the moment of experience just look what this is and how this is happening then you will see arising existing and disappearance is equal to everything 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 means everything when the day you recognize that 
that is where you become free from this all the thoughts that you carry in your mind so that is the day we call your liberation your transformation or your ultimate bliss of nibbana so with that i bless upon everyone with this good practice may all of you be well happy and peaceful may no harm come to you may no difficulties come to you may no problems come to you may you also have the patience courage understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life during this time period may everyone stay healthy and safe and finally may all of you attain supreme bliss of nibbana sabbhityo vajjantu sabbarogo vinasatu mate bhavatantarayo sukhi digayuko bhav ಇತ್ತಾವತ್ತಾಚಂಪದಂಪತ್ತಿಸಿಯಾಪತ್ತಿಸಿಯಾಪದಂಪತ್ತಿಸಿಯಾಪದಂಪತ್ತಿಸ